the Supreme Court Deputy Registrar of the Supreme Court, the Mayor, rather the Chairman of Region Number no. 7 and the Deputy Chairperson of the Region and all regional officials, the, His Worship the Mayor of Bartika, the members of the police force and so many other distinguished invitees already so elegantly recognized by the speaker who preceded me. Our beautiful students who are joining us here today, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor for me to be afforded the opportunity to speak here this morning and to be associated with this monumental occasion. This is indeed a tremendous achievement. It is the signification of the transformation taking place in our country. The Honorable Chancellor in her remarks were careful to detail the number of facilities that will converge here in this one and singular edifice and the type of furnishings with which it is being equipped. Modern furniture, washing machine, dryer, internet, television, etc. Ten years ago, just ten years ago, those facilities in a court would have been considered inconceivable, not possible. This, I have no doubt, will what will be the standard bearer of courts going forward. One is being constructed in Region 1. Another one will start at Vigilance shortly. The Chancellor spoke about two more on the East Bank. This is what they will look like in the future. And this is a manifestation of the speed with which our country is transforming before our eyes. You must have read in the newspapers and seen in the news the number of international hotels that have signaled their intention to locate here. Holiday Inn, Hilton, Radisson, and many others. There must be a reason why so many branded international hotels want to be here. The COVID pandemic is preventing us and you from appreciating the magnitude of universal interests currently focused on our country. A Brazilian magazine described us as the next Dubai. Economists have predicted that we will be the fastest growing nation in this hemisphere. What our foreparents fought for, struggled for, died for, we in this generation are so fortunate to be reaping the benefits and seeing the transformation. The Learned Chancellor in her excellent presentation again began by remarking when the people of Martica, our foreparents in 1960, had to go upstairs of a police station once per week, once per month, 
to have their cases heard. That is what your grandparents and your parents endured. Today, you will have a magistrate resident here in an air-conditioned courtroom who will be able to take your evidence by recording every single day of the week, five days per week, all year round. The judicial arm of the state is essential to us going forward as a country and as a people. Economists have done a lot of studies and they have established beyond doubt that in every society in which there is economic development, social progress, and prosperity, you have a judicial system that is functioning, that is efficient, that is considered to be impartial, and that enjoys the public confidence of that society. We can't get progress without that. And that is why our government is committed after recognizing that pivotal role and constitutional function of the judiciary in the equation of nation building, is committed to work with the judiciary every step of the way to ensure that we provide you, the people of our country, the quality of justice system to which you are entitled. This is the place where we must all turn for the settlement of our disputes. When our family turn against us, when our friends turn against us, when our neighbors turn against us, when our employers turn against us, when our contractors turn against us, when your political leaders turn against you, it is the judiciary to which we must all come in the end for protection and for vindication of our rights. And that is why it is the duty of every citizen of this country to ensure that our judiciary is respected, that our judicial officers are treated with dignity, that their integrity is not impugned, and that their independence is not attacked. We all owe that to ourselves, to our country, and indeed to the judiciary. Our government will continue to partner with the judiciary as we have done on so many occasions to improve the system for the benefit of our country. Only yesterday, I spoke at a conference of attorneys general of the OAS, Organization of American State, and CARICOM. And the theme was the use of information technology in the COVID pandemic period in our legal system. And with pride, I outlined for that very August gathering the initiative that the judiciary and the executive have worked to establish in Guyana. And I speak of the over two dozen virtual courtrooms which we have built using containers and equipping with the requisite technological apparatus and have located them at the main prison centers of our country. The one at Mazaruni is currently being completed now. The containers are ready, but the contractors told me that they have to build a foundation upon which the containers must be rest, uh, will be rested. So that the prisoners don't have to come to the magistrate's court. 
These centers are located in close proximity to the prison centers, these containers courts, and the prisoners are taken there and they are patched in with their lawyer and the magistrate. So our resi resident magistrate here, for example, will not necessarily have to go or bring the prisoners, the prison authorities would not necessarily have to bring the prisoners from Mazaruni to attend court. The hearings can be done from those containers. And these are not initiatives that I think will die with COVID. Hopefully COVID is not with us for much longer. These are initiatives, I have no doubt, because of their pure utilitarian value, will survive the pandemic. Just imagine the security and other costs that the state is saving by not being able to, by not being forced to transport these prisoners by air, sea, by air, road, or river to courts every time the case is called. And that is only one, one initiative that I'm speaking about. We have to get a modern structure that will be the epicenter of our judiciary. Modern, which can be compared with any in the Caribbean, are, are accommodated in the programs. They start from makeup classes all the way to PhD. And you can do it conveniently in your living rooms. You don't have to disrupt your ordinary everyday life. You can continue to work and still do it. We are doing all of that so that our people can be equipped to take advantages of the developmental trajectory that our country is scheduled to traverse in the very near future. I am very pleased that this edifice is now completed and we can now say that Bartika has the best possible magistrate's court in the country and start from this to move to the other regions to ensure that every new court that we build will at least be equal to this, but aspiring to be better. That is how we have to move to develop our country. Justice is essential to peace, harmony, progress, and prosperity. No society, none, has ever progressed where the people feel that they do not have access to justice. The right to Medicare, the right to free speech, the right to movement, the right to property, all of them are subject to the right to justice. Because if you don't have access to justice, then you can't vindicate, you can't protect, you can't defend those rights. And in every society, unfortunately, the persons who are the largest uh, um, without access to justice are the poor people who are the largest in any society. But that is something that we have to work on. How do you make justice more accessible to the people who need it the most? Madam Chancellor and distinguished Chief Justice, I want to congratulate, well, both of you are saying that the other one is the, the working force, so I will, not to avoid any controversy, I'll put the two of you together, Madam Chancellor and Madam Chief Justice, for 
merging your energies and merging your time to push the developmental agenda of the judiciary. This is the first time that we have a person, a woman performing the functions of chancellor and a woman performing the functions of chief justice at the same time. 30 years ago, it may have been felt in our country that you know what? Women can do this work. Women can perform these functions. And that's the transformation that I'm speaking about. These are two women who have shown without doubt that they are capable of exemplary leadership. And this is a testimony of their accomplishments. So I want us to give them a huge round of applause. I also want to thank their backup team. No leader can succeed if he doesn't have a good team behind him. And Team Supreme, by name and nature, seem to be Team Supreme. <laughs> and they have really acquitted themselves supremely in very adverse circumstances. And I want to salute them and congratulate them. And I want to congratulate all those who have directly or indirectly been part of this very, very pivotal and fundamental structure that we are here to celebrate. To the people of Bartica, I hope that you make the best use of these facilities. By now, you would have realized how special you are because nowhere in the country you can stay outside and hear from a mic when your case called. Bartica will be the first court in Guyana's history, not even in Georgetown they have it, where that will be done. So you are indeed a very privileged set of people, and please ensure that you make the best use of this facility. Thank you very much, and please enjoy the rest of your day.